So hello everyone, I'm on the couch with uh, Cheshwaf Shigeda. He's a Polish photographer, lives in Britain, and recently published this wonderful book called Polska Britannica. And although he has a very complicated name, I actually call him Jan, which is his middle name. Welcome Jan to the foundation. So your parents moved to the UK in the late 40s, and you were born in 54. And uh, you started your photography career very early. Tell us a bit about your uh, childhood darkroom. <laughs> well, my first camera was a Kodak Instamatic. Do you remember that? You'd pop in a cassette and you'd have 12 shots or 20 shots and you had to make them count. Uh, it grew from there, my interest in photography. I built a darkroom at home in the attic of our house and um, had developing dishes and enlarged there. I slept in the bedroom next door and um, I was hooked. I enjoyed the detail that a camera could produce and I developed my own pictures there. I didn't really know what I was doing. I sort of fumbled my way and learnt steadily by through experience and mistakes. Uh, and then it grew from there. I bought a 35 mm camera, a Praktika, I think it was in those days, and started developing my own films. And, and on it went. I was photographing my family too, all the time. I've still got those pictures, taken before Polska Britannica, before the book, uh, the family. And it was... Um, an education all the way. It was a hands-on, self-taught. So did you have any influences? Uh, did you see books, magazines, go to photography shows? Did you have any N input? None at that stage, no. I, I studied photography to O-level and A-level. So the focus of those was on the technique and, and learning how, you know, how cameras worked and how film worked and so forth and light levels. Um, the, the first input I had was when I went to Trent Polytechnic as a student of photography. And it was... Um, Confusing, to say the least. <laughs> I had to take a year out to understand what I was doing there and why I was there. I mean, I still enjoyed photography, but I didn't understand how I could apply my skills to my vision if I married the two. And it came together quite quickly during my year out. But, you know, your main interest is photographing people, while as Trent back in those days had people like Paul Hill and John Blakemore, and they were very much more interested in the landscape. So... Where did you find the, the projects about people and what they were doing that, uh, that inspired you? And what was the first one that thought, wow, that's really what I want to do? It was um, a, a self-portrait project. And I took photographs of my family, my Polish family. And when I put the pictures up on the wall, all my fellow students kept shouting, can't you see what you've done? Can't you see what they've done? They're really excited by the pictures. And I couldn't see them. I couldn't see the work. I was too close to it. I'm sure you understand what I mean by I do, that. do, yeah. yeah. Uh, and that's why I started being confused as to what it was that I produced that I couldn't see. Mm -hmm. So I took a year out to um, do other things. I worked as a postman, I worked in a shop, I worked for a company erecting marquees all over the country, I worked as a taxi driver. So I did anything but photography, but still continue taking photographs in my spare time. And when I came back to finish my two years at Trent, I focused on photographing my Polish family and the wider community, because then I, I could see what I was doing. I so was, you hadn't actually started to photograph the Polish community before you went to Trent? I dabbled in it. I'd taken pictures, uh, and I've still got those pictures. I've got to look back at them. I haven't really explored them properly. But when I went to Trent, I had the time then to, and the equipment I could borrow from Trent to photograph to my heart's content. Um, so, so I, I, and they supplied film as well. So it was a very useful period, a uh, very useful resource, I should say. And um, the, you know, I, I went and photographed anything and everything I could whenever I could while I had the time to do it. Because one realisation I had quite early on, especially during my year out, was I born into a shrinking community. That the, the people in my community were getting older and dying. I went to many funerals and I, I thought I had to take photographs of them while they were still there and doing all these Polish things that are around me. But are you suggesting, because now there's been a new influx of uh, Polish people, that those traditions have died, or do you think uh, they're still maintained? They're maintained. They've changed. They're different. The, the people look different. The, the people in my photographs were of a particular character type, and they're, they're very similar to the people that appeared in your early Irish photographs. You know, they could have been Irish if you uh, mm -hmm. look at them through a different, different eye. And, and they were great characters and produced wonderful visual material. So when I went to events, I was hunting for photographs mm -hmm. amongst this fantastic cast of people before me. It was like a theatre show unfolding. And um, I had to make as many shots count because it was pre-digital. Yeah. So um, you'd have a limited number of shots and you'd have to work and go for it. And I could see the pictures for me. I knew when I got the picture. You just knew it. And, and um, went on to the next one. 
And what sort of reception did you get from the Polish community? Were they bemused by this idea of you being interested in photography? I didn't tell anybody what I was doing. They, they assumed that photography was my hobby because they've seen me taking photographs since, since my teens. And so they just tolerated me. I was just there taking pictures within the community. And a few people asked to, to be photographed because they wanted souvenirs for themselves. I'd very happily take pictures of them and, and give them back as a gift. The only people that knew what I was doing were the Polish priest. He was a pivotal figure in the, the community knew everybody, circulated widely. Um, my parents, I think they understood what I was doing, but they didn't really understand you know, the scale of it. And they, they put up with it. And that was it. Because if you look at the pictures, with, with the occasional reference to a, a British car, they could have been taken in Poland. Yeah. It's funny, isn't it? Yes, that's the... Well, I think that's... My early influences were... Um, Films by Andrzej Wajda, a Polish film director. They're post-Second World War films. They're all in black and white, and very moody and atmospheric and, and, and very well-crafted films. Uh, and so I, I loved those films. So that was an influence on my work. Uh, Polish posters were another one, that simplicity of design in Polish posters. But then it's the people and, and what they were doing, the way they looked and, and the way they behaved. It was, they're the ones that made the pictures. And I just went around and found the photographs and, and recorded them. So after you left Trent, you had a, an exhibition at the Half Moon Gallery. How, how did that come about? I sent them a selection of photographs, hoping that they might be interested. And they were. Uh, the photographs caught their attention. The, uh, Mike Goldwater, who was involved with camera work at the time in the Half Moon Gallery, said that the pictures that they received were more powerful than the usual that they had, and, and they wanted to see more. I was happy to oblige as a young, aspiring student of photography. And the, re and the result was that they cre also created a touring exhibition that was laminated that um, toured different venues. Which is venues. very much the style of Half Moon in those days. Yes. And I believe most of those um, sets of laminated exhibitions have disappeared and we're delighted that we're going to be receiving uh, your original set into the collection here. And how different, by the way, was that exhibition and this selection of work to, say, what ended up in the uh, more recently published book? Well, many of the pictures that are in the original exhibition are in the book as well. The difference is that I was a young man when I selected those photographs. I was going for um, theatre and impact and, and visual um, style in terms of the presentation. Now, looking back at my contact sheets and the work, being a bit more mature and having a bit of grey hair, I can see different things in the photographs that I shot, different aspects that are perhaps a bit quieter and calmer, have more humanity in them. So putting together the pictures for my book Polska Britannica was a, was a joy because rediscovering new pictures that I hadn't seen for a long time. So you stopped being a photographer or did you continue? Because what, what's interesting to, to me is this, um, you know, you finished this work in maybe in the 80s, was it? And here we are in 2020 or 2019 when the book was published. What did you do in that period between the two? I worked as a freelance photographer, commercial work. Um, just, just to make a living, make ends meet. And then I drifted into other work. I discovered that I had a, a talent for languages because I don't just speak Polish and English, but I speak French and Italian as well. And I worked in the travel industry as a, as a, a tour guide, escorting groups overseas. And um, then set up my own tour operating business called Magic Compass. And, um, and then drifted into another enterprise selling handmade uh, knitting yarn for, for knitters. And that was, went very well until the bottom fell out of the market. <laughs> um, but um, and then I worked in marketing. So I had a flair for marketing um, and um, worked for different organisations doing that. And, and um, latterly, I freelance building websites for businesses and looking after their websites and helping them to get onto page one of Google. Uh, and so that's how I've been eking out a living. Uh, but the, it's, been, it's been feast and famines yeah, all along. And now I've come to the age when I've reached retirement age. <laughs> I've got um, some income coming in from a state pension, which helps to, to offset that need to earn money. So I've been able to revisit my Polish archive and, and, and uh, I'm scanning work that hasn't been digitised before. And so how come, uh, so it's just because you retired, you suddenly had time on your hands to go back and look, uh, look at the work. And, and then what happened? I mean, did well, you... Well, uh, partly, also, I was conscious that um, the, the the work had been in a drawer for 40 years. I thought, I'd better, better fish it out. Especially now that a lot of the people I photographed were, had died. Mm -hmm. um, when the Half Moon exhibition was touring, it came to Loughborough, my hometown. 
and it caused a bit of upset and amongst the community I'd photographed because for years they've been keeping their heads down, just they, they didn't want to be noticed, they were just getting on with life, and they 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 were regarded as um, well, in their time they were regarded as bloody foreigners, uh, and they had a lot of abuse that they put up with, so they just wanted to have a quiet life and not not be noticed. And here I come, a young aspiring photographer with an exhibition that. that gives them publicity, so they didn't, they didn't enjoy that, it was very uncomfortable. And I learned then that I had to sit on this work for a long time until they passed away, so I could then bring it out and, and enjoy the photography, let other people enjoy the photographs, um, but it wouldn't cause any upset amongst the community that I, I'd photographed. It's interesting, because you, you, you call that a little form of racism, really, isn't it? But it's something you normally associate with the black community mm. as opposed to the, to the Poles. Yeah, no, they, they, it, was, it was here, after the Second World War, uh, my my parents arrived in 1948 through different channels. My mother's family had been in Siberia, deported there by the Soviets, and then by a long overland route through the Middle East, they ended up in Africa, in East Africa, um, in a camp for displaced persons, and then were left by boat in 1948 from Mombasa, arrived in Southampton, and eventually ended up in, in Leicestershire, at Burton on the Wolds, in a, a former RAF camp. Uh, and that's where I was born, in Nissan Hut. Uh, and uh, my father was in the Polish forces and fought in Italy, the Monte Cassino, uh, before arriving in England. Then um, they, the, the, uh, the, so the, the, the males, the men who were soldiers, were um, re-employed in essential industries. So they were told work, where they had to work. So my father worked in an iron foundry in Moulton Mowbray. And um, in 1947, Winston Churchill passed the Polish Resettlement Act, the first immigration act in this country which allowed the Poles who were here to remain in this country rather than returning to a Soviet-influenced, controlled Poland. Um, but there was a lot of uh, prejudice at that time. A lot of British people did not want the Poles here. They wanted them to go back you know, to where they came from. But the Poles were also taking up the jobs that uh, many of the British people you know, weren't able to do or didn't want yes. to do, like mining and such like. Uh, yes. I, I remember myself photographing Polish miners in the Midlands. So uh, what was the main... Um, uh, careers that they were going into at that particular time? Is it a bit of everything? Yeah, a bit of everything, but it was principally industry and rebuilding the country, uh, but the, the, the core industry. So if you are um, an educated lecturer, teacher or a lawyer, you couldn't work in that profession. You had to go into what was, what was prescribed for you. Uh, so it's manual labour, largely. Yeah. So you decided, I'd like to try and get something out with this work. So you, did you start an Instagram um, I, uh, Yes, I did. I did. I thought uh, Instagram would be a very useful way for reaching a wider audience. Uh, and um, I ran that for about a year. And then I had this inspiration. I thought I'd contact um, somebody called Martin Parr at Martin <laughs> Parr Foundation. I remember phoning up one morning, explaining what it is that I've got, and uh, what I wanted to show Martin Parr. And the person at the other end said, send, me, send an email with some samples. And the very next morning, you sent an email saying, could I come up to Bristol to show mm -hmm. you more? Uh, and, and that's how it sort of snowballed from there, rather. And um, the, as a consequence of meeting you here, um, you introduced me to Emma Chetkuti at, at Multistory in West Bromwich. They invited me to take part in a group exhibition there. And then I met my publisher here uh, and at uh, Multistory and the publisher, Rudy at uh, RB Photo Books, offered to produce the book. Uh, I have to say that the, the team, you know, Josie Atkinson and the team at RB just were outstanding to work with, really first class. Great. So it's a, it's a very good example of how one thing leads to another, isn't yes, it? Yes, yeah. And it all happened very quickly too. Mm -hmm. And I remember you saying at the time that, um, don't worry, um, good work will always find an audience. <laughs> and how true it was. Yeah. So it's great to see the book. But also, I, I know that you photographed the Asian community yeah. in, in the UK as well. Did you do that after you'd done the uh, Polish one or at the same time? It was at the same time. It was at the same time. I um, can't remember the exact year. I think it might have been 1978 or 1979. I'd landed a two-year fellowship from Westmoreland's Arts to be based in Coventry, and, and I chose to photograph the Asian community in Coventry. So I've got another large body of work that's not been seen for 40 years that I haven't started to uh, digitise yet. I mm -hmm. keep looking at the contact sheets and sighing and thinking, gosh, did I take that? Because <laughs> I'm seeing all these pictures again for the first time mm -hmm. after 40 mm -hmm. years. It's very... Thrilling. But I can understand how you made your entree into the Polish community because you were Polish yourself yeah. and everyone knew your mother. And they say, oh, that's just Helena's uh, son. You know, he's fine. Uh, how did you find it actually approaching the Asian community in Coventry? Was it more difficult? 
No, not at all. Um, because I've, I'm from a, um, an immigrant background myself, it was easier to um, introduce myself to them. Um, I had the entree via Sydney Stringer too, which had a very large Asian um, community amongst the, the school students. And they introduced me to their parents and they invited me to events. And because, like you, I've got this ability to get on with people, you smile politely, you're not threatening to them, and that um, they invited me into their homes, um, it, it wasn't a challenge at all. They were, they were very open-armed about it, and they enjoyed the attention too of somebody coming to take photographs of their customs and their traditions. So in a way, it's like a spillover from what I was doing with the Polish community. And did you have a chance ever to uh, show the, to those pictures back to the community, or indeed in Coventry? I did, I did. And I got, actually got photographs of, of uh, Asian men looking at the photographs that I gave them, and they're smiling and big beams on their face. Mm -hmm. I think they're just delighted that they, they appeared in photographs. Have you approached the Coventry uh, Year of Culture? No, not yet. <laughs> I think you should. <laughs> I would have thought it would be a no-brainer to show those I think pictures. So. I think you're right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. Well, we look forward to seeing um, that, that book as well. It's absolutely... Uh... Yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Were you working... Uh, have you got as many pictures from that as, as you did from the Polish community? Because if you have, you've got a lot of pictures, haven't you? Yes, I have. Yes, I have. I mean, my, my Polish archive numbers about 300 pictures. Yeah, good pictures. There are 80 in, in, in the book, Polska mm -hmm. Britannica. Um, the the um, Asian archive is about the same too. About, about 300 photographs in there. It's... Um, I'm afraid I'm one of, those people, one of those photographers who can see pictures. I walk around, I can see a picture, so I, I, I take it. And it's um, and if you've got the material to hand, like a camera, then bingo. And, I mean, do you have a photograph now, in fact? I do. Um, no big projects. I photograph my dogs. <laughs> I've got, I, I rehome English Bull Terriers. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, they're great characters. Yeah, they're dogs, they're English Bull Terriers. They're, they're mm -hmm. like a breed apart. Um, but I've been, I've been mulling over the next project, you know, what it's going to be, because I've learned about my interests and my characteristics and, and what motivates me in terms of taking photographs. And um, so I've, I've got a couple of ideas in mind, um, and I'll, I'll set to you on one of them in, shortly. Very good. Well, we look forward to, um, to seeing them. So thank you very much, Jan, for, for coming today to, to meet us. Thank you.